Hello everyone and welcome back to the Modern Investing Channel. Today we are looking into the biggest natural gas company in the world and that is Gazprom. It is an interesting investment because it is a Russian company and it is a commodity company and that comes with extra risks and opportunity. We will discuss the fundamental of the business and then I will share with you if it is a buy for me. Let's dive into it. Gazprom is a gas giant. It is the biggest natural gas producer in Russia and Russia is the biggest natural gas market in the world. It produces 68% of Russian gas and Gazprom alone supply 12% of the entire world natural gas demand. This number alone speaks volume on the size of the company. But what is perhaps even more mind-blowing is the gigantic amount of gas reserves they have in the ground. They have 17% of the world gas reserves. This gives them a lot of political weight. That, as we will discuss later, created some headaches. So how much is it really these gas reserves? Because a number like that, 17% of the global reserves, is difficult to picture. I looked into this fun calculation, summing up Gazprom reserves of natural gas as well as gas condensate and oil, which they also have. If you convert that in billions barrel of oil equivalent, it shows that the energy that Gazprom still has in the ground sums up to approximately 178 billions barrels of oil equivalent. If you compare that with the annual world oil demand, which is 35 billion barrels per year, it turns out that Gazprom reserves could satisfy the entire world energy consumption of oil for five years. It is mind-blowing to me that a single company has that much energy in the ground. The majority of revenue of Gazprom comes from the sales of gas, around 60% of it. Approximately a third of the revenues comes from the oil business and a little part of it comes from sales of electricity and heat. So there is no doubt that Gazprom is predominantly a natural gas company. A big question that everybody has is, is natural gas even going to be relevant in the future with the switch to renewable energy? Their estimates say so, and they expect that the percentage of natural gas in the energy mix will increase in the coming years from 24% in 2020 to 27% in 2040. And this might be true. The EU has recently drafted a plan to label natural gas and nuclear investments as green. And if that happens, more investments will go into natural gas. Current estimates is that the demand of natural gas in Europe, China and Russia will increase at least in the next decade. And for Gazprom, there are at least two growth stories. The first one is China. The power of Siberia gas pipeline is supplying China with natural gas and it is an important geographical diversification to Gazprom for not only relying on Europe. And the big advantage for China to buy Russian gas is that it's cheap. It is the closest to spot prices and it is cheaper than sourcing gas from Central Asia or importing it via boat as a liquid natural gas. The second growth story is Europe and the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline. Gazprom has completed the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline on December 29, 2021, but is not yet operating due to an infinite amount of political chess play. The Nord Stream 2 project have been fiercely opposed by the United States and Ukraine, as well by other Central and Eastern European countries, because of concerns that the pipeline would increase Russia's influence in Europe, and because of the consequent reduction of transit fees for use of the existing pipelines in Central and Eastern European countries. Moreover, the US has its own agenda in selling more of their own liquefied natural gas via boat. Because of these reasons, there have been an infinite delays in this pipeline and it is not sure yet exactly when it will be operational. And it makes sense that this is such a sensitive subject. A third of the natural gas coming into Europe is supplied by this one company alone and that gives it a lot of political influence. If we think about growth stories, the opening of Nord Stream 2 will certainly fuel higher gas volumes. It is not operational yet, but when it opens, it has the potential to increase exports by 55 billion cubic meter of natural gas per year, which should increase Gazprom exports by about 
And on top of that, we have the liquefied natural gas story, which is more under the radar story, obfuscated with all the noise from the Nord Stream 2 drama. Liquefied natural gas is the export vector of gas to countries that are not immediately reached by the Gazprom pipelines. Liquefied natural gas saw a huge spike in demand during 2020, and we can see that for the first 9 months of 2021, the production was in line with the year before, suggesting that demand is still strong. 2021 has been a great year for Gazprom, which added 62 billion cubic meters of gas production as compared to the previous year, and effectively printing the best result in the last 13 years. Also, all the other sector in Gazprom business printed impressive numbers, and I will get back in a minute on what that means for profits and dividend. Along with that, profitability went up, also thanks to high gas prices, and the business managed to increase profits and cash flows by double and triple digits in the third quarter of 2021 as compared to the same quarter a year ago. An important point to keep in mind when it comes to profitability is the investment cycles that these commodity companies have. And from that perspective, we should be in the right place, since for the next 10 years, investments are predicted to be flat on average, whereas production and exports are predicted to be going up. The most important metric impacting Gazprom valuation is without any doubt its dividend payout. As you can see in this figure, the dividend went up massively over the years from 1-2 rubles in the early 2000s to 12-16 rubles in the last few years. This 10x increase in dividend payout is fantastic for investors and allow investors to receive growing amount of cash flows just by holding the stock. The guidelines that the company have for dividend payment is that it should be no less than 50% of the adjusted net income and that it should be fully covered by the free cash flow. And the fantastic news is that in 2021 it is going to be a massive in terms of dividend payment. In just the first 9 months of 2021, Gazprom generated enough cash to pay 29 rubles in dividend, more than doubling the dividend payment from 2020. This great performance and increase in dividend fueled the stock prices of course, and it reached an all-time high. If we look at gas prices, however, we are pretty close to what we could consider it to be average price for the last 30 years. So the investments and the execution of Gazprom have been fantastic to shoot the stock to these levels despite the natural gas price being similar to what it was in 2011 and 2012. How will gas prices evolve in the future? Nobody knows. And of course, higher prices will fuel more cash to Gazprom, higher dividend payouts, and higher stock price. In my mind though, it is dangerous to formulate the investment thesis based on higher gas prices. Because this is a bet, and the gas price is not exactly at the low as it was in the last 5 years. I think that as investor, the right move is to ask myself whether I would be happy with the business with this dividend at these prices, with of course the tailwinds that are expected for Gazprom the slight increment in efficiency that are planned for the business, a bit of increase in export due to Nord Stream 2, China importing more, increased gas consumption to replace coal, etc. These are all incremental improvements that are perhaps likely to happen. They are not revolutions though, but they are also not bets on increased gas price. Because if I'm happy with the investment at these conditions today, then I would welcome if the natural gas spot price went against me and the stock dip, since it could be a potential possibility to add at lower prices and waiting for the stock to go back to the averages. And if the natural gas price exploded instead and reached levels of $10 like around 2005, then it would be an opportunity to rebalance, take some profits and wait for the price to go down before adding more. Investing in commodities can lead to fantastic returns, but you need to wait 3, 5, 10 years for the cycles to complete, and it is therefore the ultimate long-term investing strategy. Before we wrap up, let's look at Gazprom debt. It's fully covered for the next 2 plus years from cash and cash equivalents. Combine it with the strong cash generation of Gazprom at the moment, and I would argue that is not a concern right now. Alright, let's wrap up. 
On the positive, I think we are standing in front of a solid, stable company that gives exposure to emerging markets and I think it's going to incrementally increase sales and achieve higher efficiencies in years to come. Especially if natural gas will be seen as green. That could add to the tailwind, but it is difficult to know now how public opinion will shift. Investing in this company means owning 17% of the world reserves of natural gas and investing in a company that has been growing its dividend for many years. Another tailwind is the capital expenditure is not predicted to increase in the next 10 years, thereby allowing for operating cash flows to be distributed as dividends. On the negative side, there is a ton of geopolitical risk around this company. Nobody knows how Putin is going to play the game. Will Nord Stream 2 ever start pumping gas to Europe? And when? Moreover, a minority portion of Gazprom business is oil, and oil has headwinds going forward due to its environmental impact, and it is a wild card how strong or weak oil demand will be in the future. Finally, the Russian government is a shareholder of Gazprom, which adds uncertainty and potential self-dealing. As of my situation, I've added to the position in the past two years. I'm not interested neither to sell not to buy at these levels. It is simply a hold for me and a way to collect dividends. Things are going well right now for the company and I prefer to add when there is blood on the street and prices are depressed. But if prices will become more volatile on the upside or downside, I will reconsider. That's all for today. What do you think about Gazprom and investing in natural gas company? Is Gazprom a buy? Write down in the comment what you think and see you in the next video. Before we go, I must remind you that I'm not a financial advisor and this content is not financial advice. It's just my opinion and you should do your own due diligence before investing in any product. Have a great day.